We have Zeta naught. Zeta naught can be seen as an infinite nesting of epsilons. The counting sequence for Zeta naught is equal to epsilon naught, epsilon epsilon naught, epsilon 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 naught, so on and so forth. Let's have f z a naught of 3. This is equal to f epsilon 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 naught of 3. Epsilon naught turns into omega to the omega. And then it expands to omega cubed. Now pay attention to the simplified omega cubed. This is the index of epsilon. Let's focus on epsilon omega cubed first. So how do we break this down? Remember how epsilon 1 of 3 was broken down. You turn it into omega to the omega to the omega to the epsilon 0 plus 1 of 3. So epsilon omega cubed turns into omega to the omega to the omega to the epsilon, but with what index? Because we have a plus 3, this reduces into just plus 2. This becomes the index of epsilon. Don't forget a plus 1. We plug this whole thing as the index of epsilon. If we plug zeta naught as our index of epsilon, those will just equal to zeta naught. Because zeta naught is just an infinite nesting of epsilons. This is the fixed point of epsilon. We can do zeta naught plus 1. Let's have f zeta naught plus 1 of 3. This breaks down into three copies of the f zeta naught function. f zeta naught of 3 as we've known earlier, expands to this giant monstrosity. F z a naught of this giant monstrosity, that's equal to F epsilon epsilon epsilon, but with how many epsilons? This many epsilons. Now, if z a naught of this whole thing, that's equal to F epsilon epsilon epsilon, with this many epsilons. We can't get bigger with epsilon zeta naught, but we can get bigger with epsilon zeta naught plus one. We can have epsilon epsilon zeta naught plus one, epsilon 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 zeta naught plus one, and so on. This sequence is called zeta one. This is an infinite nesting of epsilons with zeta naught plus one at the bottom. The counting sequence for zeta1 is equal to epsilon zeta naught plus 1, epsilon epsilon zeta naught plus 1, epsilon 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 zeta naught plus 1, and so on. Let's have f zeta1 of 3. This is equal to f epsilon 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 zeta naught plus 1 of 3. Let's focus on epsilon zeta naught plus 1 first. This breaks down into omega to the omega to the omega to the epsilon zeta naught plus 1. Now epsilon zeta naught, as we've known earlier, collapses into just zeta naught. And then, we do the rule of exponents similar to the previous video. And then omega to the zeta naught collapses into just zeta naught. Now omega gets diagonalized into a 3. This becomes zeta naught times 3. Zeta naught times 3 breaks down into zeta naught times 2 plus zeta naught. And then zeta naught of 3, as we've known earlier, expands to this giant monstrosity. But this is just zeta 1 of 3. But we can have zeta 2, zeta 3, zeta 4, and so on. 
We can even have Omega as our index of Zeta. We can also have Epsilon Naught. We can even do Zeta to the Zeta Naught. We can keep nesting Zetas like this. An infinite nesting of Zetas is called Adanaut. This is the fixed point of Zeta.